Well, joining me right now to talk further about how Michigan is actually tackling the problems that aquatic invasive species bring is Sarah LaSage, Aquatic Invasive Species Program Coordinator with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. Hi, Sarah. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining us here on Great Lakes Now Connect. We appreciate it. So why don't you go ahead as the AIS Program Coordinator at the DEQ, what is your job description and what are the goals and the things that you're working on? One of the biggest things that we're working on right now in Michigan is updating and implementing our Aquatic Invasive Species State Management Plan. And that plan outlines and guides our efforts and also communicates where we're going um, with any interested party in our efforts to prevent, detect, and control aquatic invasive species. Now, this is a, a relatively new position in Michigan with the Department of Environmental Quality? It is. Um, two years ago, with Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding, we've had um, an opportunity to further build our aquatic invasive species program in Michigan. Um, my position is funded with those federal funds, and we also have um, capacity building funds that go to Department of Natural Resources and Department of Ag. So we're all working together to collaborate and communicate better on how we want to address the problem. You know, and I think it's really interesting that we've gotten to the point that we need a position like this in states like Michigan and I'm sure around the Great Lakes Basin to start spearheading some of the problems that aquatic invasive species are, are bringing in. How do you work with other groups? And you talked about the Department of Agriculture and several other uh, departments within the state of Michigan. How does the state then work with maybe other environmental groups or other groups around the basin and comparing notes on, on what you're working on? Well, there's two ways that we're really engaged, and we have been engaged for a long time, but we can see the efforts ramping up through additional funding coming into the basin. The first way that we're really engaged is through the Great Lakes Panel on Aquatic Nuisance Species, and the purpose of that panel is to, um, it was um, established through an act of Congress, and uh, the Great Lakes Panel informs the federal ANS task force and also is a venue for um, the U.S. and Canadian governments at the federal level to come together, mm -hmm. state, provincial level, and also researchers to collaborate and communicate on the issue. Yeah, because it would seem that we have so many groups that are all working towards the same thing. And when we talk about the problem, obviously, with the many states of the Great Lakes effects and also in promises of Canada, it would seem that sometimes it could be complicated to make sure that everyone is on the same page and, and coordinating their efforts. That's true. The other avenue that we have in Michigan is an AIS, Aquatic Invasive Species Advisory Council, and that was established um, through the Mich Michigan legislature. Um, there we have active engagement with industry, environmental groups, um, as well as state agencies to discuss specifically Michigan issues, but also broadly basin-wide issues with aquatic invasive species. Now, Michigan just drafted a new AIS management plan. What went into that and what is actually in that plan that people need to know about? Well, we focus on four goals, preventing new aquatic invasive species, limiting the spread of species that are already here, early detection, rapid response, and management and control. So it really is a comprehensive wow. plan. We had public input. It was a very, um, very much a collaborative effort where we had um, interested parties coming together to get down to the very detailed action. It's a long plan, mm -hmm. there's a lot in there, but it really tells any reader where we're going. What was some of the public input? Um, Just people, out of curiosity, what were people seeing and, and noticing that was affecting them on, on a day-to-day on -day basis? Well, there is a lot of focus on Asian carp and ballast water, organisms in trade, some of these main vectors um, where we need to focus our prevention efforts. Um, people are also concerned with education and outreach, making sure that people know what to look for and how to report it. The third thing that people are really concerned with is management and control. There's Eurasian water milfoil in the lake where mm -hmm. I have my cottage. Um, you know, how can we deal with the problems that are already here? Would you say that it is hard to get the public engaged, or do you think that more and more people are becoming aware of the issues surrounding aquatic invasive species because of Asian carp, because that seems to be the most thing that's on people's mind, or the, the thing that they know the most about. It is a dynamic species that's getting a lot of attention, no doubt, but I think awareness is building as we see um, more and more problems um, from interaction and confounding relationships, I think there is the awareness there. Um, although I do hear sometimes you'll be driving down the road and see the Stop Aquatic Hitchhikers billboard and people 
maybe don't understand what Stop Aquatic Hitchhikers means. Mm -hmm. That's a national campaign talking about how um, things like zebra mussels or plant fragments can hitch a ride on your boat trailer and that you need to be aware of that. So we still have a lot of work to do with education outreach. You know, Sarah, you said something really important there, or, or, or the thought that people can actually do something because when we have policymakers sitting here, we have scientists talking about things that sometimes people can feel like, well, what can I really do to help out? But there are certain things that people can do starting at home to make sure that they're part of the, the solution in keeping aquatic invasive species at bay in the Great Lakes. We definitely all have a role to play, whether you are a beachgoer, an angler, a hunter, a recreational boater, um, you know, clean, drain, dry is the message that we deliver a lot. Um, clean your boat, drain out your live well, um, dry it in between moving to another water body. Um, also learn what to look for, be aware. If you see something that is unusual, contact the DNR, the DEQ, um, or your local university um, so that we can detect and respond to those invaders. Sarah LeSage, thanks so much for joining us on Great Lakes Now Connect. We appreciate it. Thank you.